It is the sixth and final softball championship in Conway, Arkansas this weekend. And it is a rematch of the championship last year featuring the Green County Tech Golden Eagles taking on the two-time defending 5A state champions, the Benton Panthers. Welcome back to Ferris Field alongside Bobby Swafford. I'm Dorian Kraft. Bobby, over the last three years, Benton has been the cream of the crop in the 5A. Panthers have won the last two state championships. What is it that makes Benton such a difficult matchup for their opponents? I think it's depth. I mean, one through nine in their order, they almost they don't have a weakness. They're, they've played in big games. They load up in the non-conference competition. They play the 6A schools. They play out-of-state schools. You can't throw anything at them that they haven't already seen time and time again, and they always come up with that big hit when they need it most. That is something Green County Tech knows all too well. We'll get to those highlights of last year's state championship game in just a minute. Let's take a look at how the Golden Eagles progressed through this year's state tournament to get that rematch going up against Benton. Green County Tech, that one was a slugfest in the opening round, 9-6, to six, getting the victory over Mountain Home, moving on to take on Sheridan, a traditional postseason power. Green County Tech coming out on top, 4-2, to two, and then a close one for the Golden Eagles, eking out the 2-1 win over Van Buren, setting up the rematch between Benton and Green County Tech in this year's 5A state championship game. And no surprise for Green County Tech, there is a ton of talent on this Golden Eagles team. But for GCT, it all comes down to Ava Carter. It's really hard not to talk about Ava Carter when you talk about the Eagles offense. The Arkansas commit has done it all season long for GCT, a 578 batting average, nine doubles, 10 triples, which is unheard of at the high school level, six home runs, 22 stolen bases, really uses her speed to her advantage. And when she gets on base, the, her teammates know how to move around, and she creates a lot of problems for opposing teams. Only going to get better as well. Carter, just a junior. She'll still have one more season before she goes up to Fayetteville to join the rest of the Razorbacks. You want to talk about Division I talent, though. We'll get to the player on Benton in just a second. That is the name known throughout the state. Let's take a look at the Panthers' path back to the 5A state championship game. It has been one that has been marked Benton opening with a 9-1 win over Sylvan Hills. Coming in with that target on their back being the two-time defending state champion, rolling over Harrison 10 nothing. And then Greenwood, the team that Benton beat back in the 2021 state championship. That was a close game. Greenwood beat Benton earlier this year. Panthers come out on top one to nothing to set up the rematch going against Green County Tech. And for Benton, she is the two-time Arkansas Gatorade Player of the Year. It is the Stanford softball commit, Alyssa Houston. I don't know if we have enough time in the free game <laughs> to talk about how good Alyssa Houston has been pitching-wise or even offensively over the last couple of years. But this year, it's absurd how good she's been. 17-3 and three in the circle, has only given up eight earned runs and over 100 innings pitched. And that's just the pitching side of things. And we'll talk about how good that pitching's been in just a little bit. But offensively, get these numbers. A 691 batting average, 13 homers, 52 RBIs. And whether she wants to be a pitcher at Stanford, a hitter at Stanford, they may want her to do both because, quite honestly, she's one of the most dominant high school softball players our state has ever seen. Two-way players are on the rise at the collegiate level. And, Bobby, to your point, the state of Arkansas has produced some top-level collegiate talent over the last couple of years. Alyssa Houston looking to continue that tradition when she joins the Cardinal next season. But as we mentioned, these two teams very familiar with one another over, with one another over the last several seasons as Benton topped Green County Tech in last year's state championship game. That was a 3-2 game, but not without a little bit of controversy, shall we say. Green County Tech actually able to get on the board first in that game. A little bit of a defensive miscue for Benton allowed the Golden Eagles to strike first with two runs early on. And then... Benton playing a little bit of defense. That's 3 2 nothing rather for Green County Tech. We had a rain delay as well as this one played on into the night. Benton ekes out a run in 17 and a half hours yeah. between when this game was paused, when they got back to play. But when they got back, it was Benton in the whites. They love those home whites rolling a little bit. And then the Panthers coming through the big hit down the third baseline. That ended up being the go ahead winning run as Benton able to capture back-to-back -back state championships. Alyssa Houston coming on in relief in that game, ended up picking up the win. She was the save back in 2021 as well. Houston being named the MVP of last year's 5A state tournament. And so this matchup has been a, 
something that both teams have worked for this entire season. Yeah, Green County Tech had the momentum. They really felt like they had bitten on the ropes in that championship game last year, and then the rains came, and it wasn't just a sprinkle, and all of a sudden, oh, we get to postpone <laughs> this and to help out the, the team that's ranked higher. It was a torrential downpour, lightning, and you mentioned the 17-hour delay, and it came back. Benton got to hit the reset button, and they came back refreshed the next day and able to, to rally back and win this the second consecutive title and complete their second straight perfect season. Now Benton and Green County Tech already played once this season. That was back on May the 9th. That was a 9-1 Benton victory. So very convincing for the Panthers over the last four contests. Benton has won all four and has outscored the Golden Eagles 19-3 in those games. Bobby, what do the Golden Eagles need to do today against Benton to get that offense going a little bit? Well, one thing they have to do is they have to put that out of their mind. And I like the idea of scheduling Benton so late in the season. That's a non-conference game. Did not have to play them. And so all of a sudden, they, they, they scheduled Benton late in the year because they, they knew that if they were going to win a state championship, they needed to see this team up close and personal before they got to here in Conway. They have to weather the storm, and we know how good Houston is. You've got to weather the storm. Get to the third, fourth, and those middle innings. If it's a one nothing game, it's a 1-1 game, all of a sudden you've got some confidence, maybe some doubt creeps into the mind of the two-time defending state champion, and that's how upsets are made. This is how Green County Tech's offensive lineup is going to look today, going up against Houston, who will get the start in the circle. It will be Ava Carter, the Arkansas commit, leading things off, batting 578 on the year. Ton of speed at the top. Zoe Reynolds, Marley Spear in the three-hole, 418 on the year. And then this is going to be a name that sounds familiar to softball fans around the state. Weslyn Burnside, the younger sister of former Arkansas star Braxton Burnside, batting fourth today. Emma Thomason, Sophia Gonzalez, Carly Burrow, the starting pitcher in the seventh spot. Avery Stokes and Bree Sage round out the batting lineup for Green County Tech. And they will be going up against a Benton lineup that is very familiar, very comfortable in this spot. But Bobby, as we've seen time and time again throughout this championship weekend, funny things happen when you get to a state final. Yeah, it really does. And it's all about who, who can handle the emotions, who can handle a little bit of adversity. Benton doesn't have the advantage of playing on their home field for this year. The last couple of years, the state championships have been at Benton. Uh, of course, that's why they bid on that and they get to host, but now it's not on their home field. So a little bit of a different feel, even though they're the home team on the scoreboard, they're going to get the last bat. If they get a little adversity, if Green County Tech gets a, a runner on, on first and third and one out, how do they handle those moments? And how does Green County Tech take advantage of those moments as well? It's going to be key. There's another look at starting pitcher Alyssa Houston, who has been lights out inside the circle. 103 and two thirds innings pitch, 17 and three on the year. And Bobby, she is what you call high volume strikeout. 241 strikeouts to just 23 walks this year. So if Green County Tech gets a hit today, it's going to be something that hasn't been done in 35 innings against Houston. The last 108 batters that Houston has faced, three have walked, zero have picked up a hit, 82 have struck out. So 82 of the last 108 have been fanned by Houston. That's how dominant she's been coming into the state championship matchup. Houston with a .54 ERA, holding opposing batters to just a 0 0.63 batting average oh as we are underway here in the 5A state title game. It's not fair. <laughs> I mean, that, that's below 100. That's why she's going to Stanford. That's but this right. will be a good matchup between these two because this is the type of level they're going to face at the collegiate game as Houston delivers a strike down the center of the plate to Ava Carter. As you might expect, the velocity is going to be up. Probably the hardest thrown uh, pitcher that you're going to bring Kenny Tech's going to see up to this point this season. And it's it's really hard to adjust to that when you're when you're not used to seeing it. You go 25, 30 games like Green County Tech has 24 and 5 on the season. You don't see somebody who throws that hard. Well, Bobby, you've seen more high school softball games than I have this year, but I would venture to believe that Houston probably the hardest thrower in the state of Arkansas at this point. On the outside corner, strike three. It's it's the combination too, Dorian, of throwing hard and placing. There, there's one thing if you throw hard and all of a sudden it goes to the backstop, but then again, you can paint the black just like that and you've got no chance. College coaches will tell you that placement is more essential than speed because if you can place the ball, you can be dominant. Houston, first pitch bounces off the turf. Zoe Reynolds in the two hole, 402 on the season. Now Green County Tech, they've got a ton of power. As a team, the Golden Eagles batting 379 on the year, but out of 321 total hits, 
120 have been extra base hits. Yeah, this is not your parents' fast pitch <laughs> softball. This this is not bunt them over, bunt them across, and try to get them in. Now they're they're going to slug it slug it out. There's 100 singles, but 73 doubles, 16 triples, 31 home runs. And when you're facing a pitcher that who throws it that hard, as long as you make solid contact, that ball is going to travel. Put in play. Houston fields her position over to first in time and two quick outs for the Benton Panthers. Yeah, that's, that's really tough to do as a pitcher who's used to throwing underhand, but Houston steps and delivers the strike over to first base to retire Reynolds. Bobby, you made a good point as we take another look at the bunt. Just a little bit too on top of it, pushes right back to Houston inside the circle with a pitcher that does throw with the velocity of Houston. As a batter, you don't need to generate that much of your own power. First pitch to Marley Spear catches the outside corner. Five thirty-five on base percentage from Spear, four eighteen average. Lifted, it'll stay in play. Houston is under it, makes the catch for out number three. So Alyssa Houston retires the side in order. The defending champions will come to bat in the bottom of the first. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. This month on Arkansas PBS. Bought it for, because I loved it. We'll find out if Leslie loves it too next time on Antiques Roadshow from Little Rock, Arkansas. At a time when America has become increasingly divided, it's important to consider the things that connect us. His vision is broader than the American Revolution. The things that he spoke of, that he wrote about, had a certain amount of power. Only on Arkansas PBS. Let me take you for a ride on the baseline. Let's go! Welcome back to Ferris Field in Conway, Arkansas. I'm Dorian Kraft alongside Bobby Swafford. Thank you so much for joining us for this sixth and final state championship softball game in the 5A final between Greene County Tech and the Benton Panthers. Benton coming back in the bottom of the first inning. They will be led off by senior Addison Davis, followed by Alyssa Houston, Lydia Bethards, Emily Reed, Cameron Kohlklager, the freshman, getting some meaningful playing time. 582 average, A.C. Mitchell, Mallory Crosby, Violet Mendez, and Dakota Hompson rounding things out for Benton. So if you're Green County Tech, you've already gone down in order. You need to return the favor, try to settle in. Don't let this Benton Panther offense, who's so powerful and high scoring, let them get on track early. So Benton will be going up against Carly Burrow inside the circle as Addison Davis looks at a first pitch strike. Burrow's committed to play at a Washita Baptist, 2.91 ERA. A little higher than you might expect for a team in the championship, but their offense has been so explosive this year that hasn't mattered. And called strike up in the zone. And Burrow was a 5A All-State pitcher a year ago, 5A pitcher of the year. According to Scorebook Live, 19 and 3 on the year with a 1.36 ERA. Has been the workhorse again in the circle this year. The 0-2 taken upstairs. This is a Benton lineup, much similar to Green County Tech in terms of average, 387 on the year. Not as much power though. 50 doubles, only 18 home runs. 1-2. Put in play over to the right side of the field, up the middle, over to first, not in time to get the Speedy Davis. And Addison Davis leads off the bottom of the first with an infield single. You mentioned that Benton doesn't have the power numbers like some other teams we've talked about this weekend, but that means you've got to use your speed to your advantage. That time a well-placed uh, ball on the infield takes the second baseman over to her right, can't make the backhanded play, lost her footing as she tried to deliver a strike to first and allowed Davis to beat up the throw. 
Remember, Benton plays on an all-turf field as well, so a little bit of advantage Panthers as Houston. First pitch swinging, rips it down the third baseline. That ball is going to get through. Cox waving the runner around, so Benton now with runners on second and third after Alyssa Houston delivers a double. Houston just turns on the first pitch, and you can see why her average is almost near 700, her 13th double of the season. Quickly gets the hands inside, barrel out in front, and smokes one down the left field line. Benton in business, just three pitches in already now with runners on second and third scoring position. And we will get a courtesy runner for Alyssa Houston. And Bobby, if you're Benton here, what's the mentality knowing that you have a chance to really put your foot down early? Yeah, hey, this, this pedal to the metal. You got Bethard's coming up with a 474 average, two runners in scoring position. You know, state championship games all, don't always play out like you expect them to, so you have to take advantage of the moment when you get it, no matter how early it is, and obviously here with nobody out in the first. First pitch to Bethards. Swung on and missed. Healthy cut on the curve. Really aggressive start uh, to the approach for Benton here. You saw Houston go after the first pitch. Bethards does the same thing. So if you're Burrow, you've got to maybe change things up, try to – it's hard to say don't throw a strike on the first pitch, <laughs> but maybe not be as aggressive in your approach in the circle. The 0-1. That one tapped into the 5-6 hole. Throw over to third. Not in time. But Benton pushes the first run across as Davis was off on contact. Everybody's safe, and the Panthers are ready with one run in. Yeah, really aggressive running on the base pass there by the courtesy runner, but she dives in. Dust does beat the throw, then Bethards gets credit for the RBI on the fielder's choice. Benton is still in business. Runners on the corner, still no one away here in the bottom of the first inning. And trying to pad their lead in their quest for another 5A state championship. Emily Reed. Takes a call strike on the inside corner. Throw down to third, not in time. As Raspberry retreats back to the base. Reed committed to play it over you. Addison Raspberry, the courtesy runner for Alyssa Houston. That ball stays upstairs, one and one. Ben so far has been the aggressor. If you're Green County Tech, how do you go about trying to work your first out? Well, uh, I mean, you have to pitch to contact one, but you have to make sure that you're not catching too much of the plate. I really think Burrow's been leaving too much meat on the bone, if you will, leaving it over, over the heart of the plate, allowing these bitten Panthers to get the barrel on. Works herself ahead in the count one and two. As Burrow still looking for the first out here in the bottom of the first inning. Benton back-to-back -back hits. Two of them on the infield, resulting in a run with runners on first and second. Way outside. And the count now even at two and two. And Bobby, you wouldn't expect there to be many nerves between both Green County Tech and Benton. Both teams have been here before recently, so a lot of these players remember exactly what this felt like a year ago. The 2-2, two -two Reed squares, pulls back. That's a healthy cut, but it's lifted. It's going to get fouled down the third baseline. Benton coming into the season as the hunted. Had a 64 game winning streak to start the season, ran to 67 before it was snapped by Bryant earlier this year. And the 2-2, that's in the turf, taken as the count runs full. And of course, won a 6A state championship earlier this week. They rallied five runs against Cabot in the seventh inning. Softball in Saline County, <laughs> very good. good. Yeah. Just a bit. Three, two, lifted out to shallow shortstop. Look like it was going to get to left field for just a second, but it does stay on the infield for Sage, and that is the first out recorded in the bottom of the first inning. It's a big first out, maybe so help settle the nerves a little bit for Carly Burrow. It'll settle in and work her game. Cameron Kolklager, 582, just a freshman standing in. 
Pulls the bump back, throw down to third, not in time. Raspberry able to get back just underneath the throw. It's the second time Green County Tech's tried to pick the runner. Both times, Raspberry's been able to get back. Good idea by Mendez as Raspberry, just a little bit off balance, able to get back in time. Cole Flagger takes a called strike middle of the third. That, that pitch caught a ton of the plate. 582 average for a freshman. That's, so just when you think you're finally going to get rid of Alyssa <laughs> Houston, you don't have to see a great player anymore. You've got another freshman coming in for Benton. Benton doesn't reload. They just replenish. That one flared. It's going to get down through the 5-6 hole. Throws coming home, not in time. And they are going to call catcher obstruction as Mendez was blocking the lane to the plate. And so Raspberry will be safe. I believe she would have been safe anyway, considering the throw bounced in the turf. But regardless, Raspberry is safe. Cole Clagger is safe at first. Benton with two runs in. You know, one thing I've noticed already from Green County Tech, sometimes you've got to make the easy play. That's going to be a really tough throw to gun down the runner on a ball that wasn't all that hard hit to you. So it's going to be a low percentage throw to get an out. Now, now again, as Cole Clagger advances to second, still second and third, and now nobody out again. Correction, one out, I'm sorry. That's the pop out. First pitch swinging is Mitchell. What a play over at first. Trying to tag and score, she does. Benton heads up base running by Lydia Bethards to tag and score on the little flare over to first base. That ball met maybe 15 feet down the line. That's a great play by Marley Spear. Lays out and makes the catch. But because she had to go to the turf to complete it, a great heads up running by Benton to tag up on a pop-up that went maybe 30 feet. I, if that. Probably the most shallow sacrifice fly you're ever going to see, but because she had to go to the ground and took that time to get back up, Benton able to scratch across another run. And you can tag and score on foul balls that are caught, but typically you don't see them stay on the infield. That was heads up base running. It's given Benton one extra run, still now with a runner on third. The first pitch swinging again. To take a look at the Green County Tech defense, Spear with the fantastic play over the fir at first. Spear, Stokes, Sage, Reynolds, first to third out in the outfield. Burnside, Carter, Gonzalez left to right, and then the battery of Burrow and Toombs for the Golden Eagles. Green County Tech finding themselves trailing by three. Another good cut, Benton. Very aggressive to start off this game. Yeah, Burrow needs to settle in here and strand that runner at third, keep the deficit at three. When you're facing a team as good as Benton, you've got to limit the damage when you can. Well, Benton not making it easy when they're tagging and scoring on <laughs> foul balls that are 20 feet down the line. To the first base side, no less. 0-2. Fouled away, sent out to left field. That ball is deep but playable. It'll hang up just in time. Burnside makes the catch, but not before Benton plates three. The Panthers leading as we head to the top of the second inning. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our community. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Arkansas, what's in your attic? Find out what your heirlooms, antiques, and collectibles are worth. Join us for the filming of a brand new show, Arkansas Treasures. This special event happens at the Arkansas PBS studios in Conway on August 5th and 6th. Tickets will go quickly, so guarantee your spot by calling or visiting our website. If your item and story are selected for filming, you may end up on our show. Your treasure may be worth more than you know. One, two, three, hurry up! At Wendy's, we're focused on what matters. That's why we've made our hamburgers square. When you want to experience the delicious taste of Wendy's hamburgers, squares the beef. 
Benton leading 3-0 after one complete here at Ferris Field. Let's take a look at the Panthers' defense playing behind Alyssa Houston here in this 5A state championship game. And for as good as Houston has been on the season, the defense has been just as good. Hobson, Bethards, Davis, Reed left to right in the infield. Pierce, Kohlklager, Crosby left to right in the outfield. And then, of course, Houston and her battery mate Mendez behind the plate. Defense hasn't been called upon much the last five games or so. <laughs> and as Houston has just been striking down pretty much everybody who comes in front of her. Brings the strike right back across the center of the plate as Weslin Burnside tries to lead things off here in the top of the second inning. The 1-1. One, one. Swung on and missed at the rise ball. To put a note on the discussion about the fielding, Benton as a team, 958 fielding percentage. So when they have been tested, the Panthers have been up to the challenge. 1-2 taken high Burnside a 375 average just a sophomore gets a pitcher so dominant you'd like to say you have to be patient make her come to you but that's not really a problem for Houston you can't afford to sit back a swung on and miss rise ball climbs the ladder as Burnside sat down on strikes You'd love to sit back and say maybe she'll make a mistake or two. That just clearly doesn't happen. We're talking about a pitcher who's walked three in the last 36 innings of work, has only walked 23 all season long. So you have to be aggressive, but that's when you can't be over aggressive because she'll make you chase one out of the zone. First pitch called a ball low and outside to Emma Thomason. A lot of young players in the heart of this Greene County Tech line. If you had Spears, a sophomore, Burnside, a sophomore, Thomas, and a freshman, is that's a healthy cut as well. Down the center of the plate, swung on and missed. And Gonzalez, a freshman as well, coming up next. So the core of this Greene County Tech team, should they be able to keep it intact, they're going to be very good for years to come. Yeah, this is the, the, the foundation is there for Green County Tech, and they're hoping they stop running into a buzzsaw like Alyssa <laughs> Houston in the state championship game, and maybe they can punch through and, and win a title. Granted, there's a lot of softball left to be played right. here today, but you know, the future is certainly bright for those girls from Northeast Arkansas. One, two, just misses on the outside corner. Home plate umpire Justine Hudspeth said it was just a bit outside. I think a buzzsaw would be a fair description that everyone would call the Benton Panthers over the last three years. Swung on and missed. Screwball comes in on the hands. Back-to-back -back Ks for Houston. She works her way away, and all of a sudden, that one dives in on the hands, and Thompson can't get the hands in fast enough, and swings and misses on one that really tails in hard on her. Houston just has such an arsenal of pitches that she can go to. It's going to be really fun to watch her compete at the next level. First pitch at the knees called on Sofia Gonzalez. Yeah, that's actually a mistake there from Houston. That one really dove back in. That's expected to be on the outer third, but dives back in, but can't get the bat off the shoulder. Could Gonzalez. 0-1. Swung on and missed. Houston quickly ahead in the count 0-2. The reason I point that out, Dorian, is not to criticize the pitcher. You're just not going to get those very often. Right. Those pitches right, right down the middle third of the plate, you're just not going to get against a pitcher of the quality of Houston. you got to take advantage of those mistakes because they're so rare. One and two is that missed high. And to your point, with a pitcher that throws at the velocity at Houston, sometimes that's that split second. And if you're waiting, you're not going to be able to catch up to it regardless if you swing. One, two. And taken is the count now even at two and two. Three strikeouts to the first five batters she's faced. Does Houston have? Gonzalez doing a nice job here working the count. 19 pitches to the first five batters, so an efficient outing to start for Alyssa Houston. Swung on and missed as Houston retires the side via the strikeout. Benton goes back to work in the bottom of the second. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports.
Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charity, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank. Member FDIC. We never gonna stop. The Children's Clinic of Conway and Greenbrier is a proud supporter of Arkansas PBS Sports. The Children's Clinic of Conway and Greenbrier serving Conway and surrounding areas with locations at 2505 College Avenue, Conway and 10 Lois Lane, Greenbrier. Benton looking to add to their 3-0 lead here in the bottom of the second inning. It will be 8-9-1 due up for the Panthers. Violet Mendez, Dakota Hobson, and back to the top of the order in Addison Davis. Fouled off. Evens the count at 1-1. One one. Well, Benton pounded out three runs on four hits in the bottom of the first inning on just 21 pitches. So didn't even make Burrow work that much in the circle. Just struck fast and struck for a lot. Yeah for someone who's going to hang around the plate. Sent back up the middle. It's going to get out into the outfield for a leadoff single, and that was really the formula for Benton in the bottom of the first inning. See good pitch, hit good pitch. Yeah, when you're, when you're going to throw as many strikes as Burrow does, uh, Benton's game plan is certainly going to be attack early in the count. And take a look at the home plate umpire, Justine Hudspeth, over at first is Eric Wallace and Jonathan Carmichael rounding out our umpiring crew today over at third base. Going to be busy on the base pass, it feels like today with the way things have started off. Bunt pulled back by Dakota Hobson, throw back to first. Mendez able to get in safely. Over the last four games between these two teams, Benton averaging just under five runs per game. They've scored 19 across the four previous meetings, the most in that 9-1 victory earlier this month. Rise ball stays up as Hobson works to send herself ahead in the count 2-0. Hobson committed to play at Central Madness College here in Conway, just down the road. And tons of collegiate talent between these two programs. It's one of the reasons why you're seeing them both vie for another state title. Ball right down the middle, taken by Hobson. Don't get here by accident. You've got to have some good <laughs> players. You have all the coaching in the world, but sometimes you've got to have the ones out there between the lines. Good players know how to execute in the big moments. As Hobson pulls back, shows Bunt, puts it right down back to the pitcher. Only play is to first. And Hobson successfully executes the sacrifice. Bunt and Mendez into scoring position. I like the aggressive approach from Benton. You think, okay, a sacrifice is not that aggressive. You've already got a 3 nothing lead. Get that runner into scoring position, and now you've got the top of your order coming back, a chance to add on to that already three-run advantage. Bobby, you know that I will never complain about a well-executed sacrifice <laughs> bunt. It is something that I think all players should learn how to do. You're going to need to do it at some point in time, even though the numbers are trending towards power numbers. Standing in the box, Davis takes a called first strike. Davis singled and scored back in the first inning. We'll take a look at the sacrifice bunt. Beautifully placed, too, right back up the center of the field. And that's the art about the sacrifice bunt. It's not just being able to put it down. It's where you place it. Tapped foul. That's right. It's, if you put it in the wrong spot, there's, it's kind of a waste because the, the idea is you have to make a certain defender field that ball. Otherwise, you're going to put yourself into a really bad spot. And you can see. Five of seven already for Benton through the lineup. First 0-2 count that Burrow has had today going up against this Benton lineup. Three runs in, five hits already. Here in the bottom of the second inning as Benton is looking for their third consecutive title. And waved at and missed. So the first strikeout of the day for Burrow. And there are two away in the inning. It's a big spot 
here for Burrow and Green County Tech with the, the dangerous Alyssa Houston. Might, might almost go ahead and put her on with the intentional walk, and that's they exactly will. what they're going to do. So the intentional walk issue to Alyssa Houston, who doubled and scored in the bottom of the first inning. So she will be on first. Runners on first and second for Lydia Bethards. But Bethards also yeah. able to come through with an RBI base hit in the bottom of the first inning. And so Benton has that type of lineup where just because you work around Houston, it, there's no let up on the other side. Yeah, it's the, the lesser of two evils, though. I mean, I'd, I'd rather face 474 average instead of 691. More hard field services providing provides original ground drone topography, serving the Midwest and Southwest 24 hour delivery survey grade accuracy. Visit moreheartfieldservices.com for details. We're going to get another runner here for Benton in the bottom of the second inning as the Panthers with two away trying to tack on to their lead. It is number double zero Azzy Morrow in its second. Running for Violet Mendez, the catcher, so courtesy running. Bethard's one for one. Catches the inside corner. We haven't seen many pitchers be willing to go on that inside corner throughout the weekend, Bobby. No, we really haven't. Everybody's kind of lived on that outside edge. More times than not, they've been, been getting that call from the umpires. Uh, but we've seen a few try to go inside, and not too many times have they been burnt. Oh, one. That stays high. I don't think we'll see too many try to go inside on someone the talent of Houston, or maybe even not if, uh, if Ava on the other side of things. But you got to pick and choose your battles because you can't let those batters just continue to dive out over the outside corner of the plate. One thing worth noting about the intentional walk issued to Houston, that's something that Benton doesn't do very often. They don't draw a whole lot of walks. They prefer to put the ball in play. That smoke to the left center field gap. One run will come in. We got a little confusion on the base pass. There's going to be a play at the plate as the umpire was standing in the way, so Green County Tech will get out of the inning as the runner cut down at the plate, but not before Benton gets one more on the RBI double off the bat of Lydia Bethards. It's 4-0 Panthers. We go to the third. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home, to your first child and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring for everything that matters most to you and your family there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love your local farm bureau insurance agent farm bureau insurance real service real people this month on arkansas pbs i know your grandfather will never consent to me is it not perfectly dreadful, Harriet, to learn that our niece's honor is now certainly lost? Fearfully romantic, though. Elizabeth! She's missing, and I'm worried sick. Mom, you don't believe me. You've got to stop all this nonsense. The world-famous thief. Father Brown's friend and nemesis is in trouble. Flambeau is now a killer. For once, I'm innocent. Only on Arkansas PBS. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers is a proud supporter of Arkansas PBS Sports. For those in the community looking for meal options after the game, Raising Cane's is known for their hand-battered chicken fingers and special sauce. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love. If you're a Benton Panthers fan, you are loving the way that this game has started. Benton jumped out to a 4-0 lead here in the top of the third inning over Green County Tech in a rematch of the 2022 5A state championship game. Golden Eagles coming to bat in the top half of the third. Burrow Stokes Sage do up. As Burrow takes a called strike on the outside corner. Just can't sit back and be too patient against Houston. She struck out four of the first six that she's faced. She's working quick. The pitch total's not high. You're starting to see why she's such a dominant force in that side that circle. The 0-1 fouled away, 0-2.
coming into this inning, Houston just 24 pitches through the first two innings, eight in the first, 16 in the second. 75% of those have been for a strike, so Houston pounding the strike zone. Ahead in the count, 0-2. Taken just off the outside corner. But I like the idea there from Houston to try and move it just about a half foot off the plate. Yeah, she's going to, you know, because that's what really good pitchers do. They set up that outside corner, and all of a sudden they start to work out farther out, farther out. One, they're going to try to get you to chase, but also two, they're trying to make that umpire change his strike zone and stretch it out just a little bit more. One, two. Cut on and missed. Four consecutive strikeouts for Alyssa Houston. Really, really tough to find a way to put the bat on the ball for Green County Tech through the first seven batters in the lineup. Golden Eagles head coach David Reynolds trying to impart some motivation to his team looking to break through against Alyssa Houston here in the third. First pitch swinging, fouled back into the screen. When you have a pitcher who's in such a groove like Houston is through the first seven batters, maybe you have to try to do something now. We're about to flip the lineup over to change her tempo, change her rhythm, whether it's step out, call time, make her readjust inside that circle. Do whatever you can to try to make her uncomfortable so she'll make a mistake. Alyssa Houston, despite playing at Ferris Field for the state championship for the first time in two years, looking very comfortable. Misses high with the rise ball count even at one and one. The last two years, the state championship game had been played at Everett Field down in Benton. Benton, of course, beating Greenwood 8-1 to back in 2021 before topping Green County Tech last year. 3-2 to as Stokes swings through. Veteran lineup for the Benton Panthers. Five seniors in the starting lineup as Houston <laughs> continues to roll. Another strikeout for the senior pitcher. Yeah, just rear back and throw it and catch up if you can. And so far, Green County Tech hasn't been up to the challenge. Five straight set down on strikes. Breeze Sage stepping to the plate in the nine spot for Green County Tech. Eight up, eight down for Alyssa Houston and the Benton Panthers. Sage hitting 284 on the year. First pitch misses high. When you're a pitcher and you're in this kind of rhythm, I, I don't know though anything affects you, to be quite honest. I mean, may, the only thing that may creep in there is just trying to be perfect. When you have to go out and, turn and try to be perfect, or maybe that's when you make a mistake. But right now, there's just nothing seems to be bothering Houston in the circle. And she's just playing pitch and catch there with her catcher. And again, unhittable. Houston has been locked in since first pitch, showing why she is one of the best Softball players in the state as that catches the center of the plate. Now one and two as Mendez got a little bit ahead of herself. Thought that was strike three, but they'll have to play one more pitch at least here in the top of the third inning. School's out. You don't have to do math anymore. <laughs> I stopped doing math a long time ago. The one, two. Put in play over to the right side. That's going to get out to right field and a hit for Bree Sage and Green County Tech. That is the first base runner of the afternoon for the Golden Eagles. Also coming up a little, mm. a little gimpy there at first base. Might have twisted an ankle on the back, but I, I, you have to give congratulations right there to Bree. First hit on down, uh, off of Houston in 38 innings of work. That's that's something to be commended right now. Now we'll see if Green County Tech can they've, they've gotten that streak out of the way. Can they get something going? Now pay attention to the right mm. ankle. It's just off the edge of the bag. They certainly hope that Sage is okay. I know what that feels like. That hurts a lot. That's one of the reasons why there's been a big argument over the years and an increasing so for safety bases in terms of giving the extra space for the runner to run so that you're not trying to catch the outside of the bag so that you're not interfering with the first baseman. It looks to be okay. Sage will stay in and run, so that's a good sign for Green County Tech. Still stretching out the ankle. They'll make sure that she's good to run. We are set to get back to play here in the top of the third inning. Two away for the Golden Eagles, bringing back up Ava Carter. He struck out looking. First pitch swinging. That was a good cut. 
She did not get cheated on that one. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. The two high-level players here, future Power Five athletes, squaring off. Adding Carter and Houston to the list of players that have come out of the state of Arkansas in recent years. They say she did not hold her swing. And you see the question there for Carter asking if it was the swing or the call. And regardless, the home plate umpire says it was a strike. Bobby, what do you think? She didn't go around. The pitch came you know, right below the letters, so it might be near to the top of the zone. And for a pitcher like Houston, she's going to get the benefit of the doubt. The 0-2 fouled away. So Carter and Houston, we mentioned, two of the best high school players. Hannah Gamble, obviously one of the best known at the collegiate level. Braxton Burnside made her mark at Arkansas before moving on. Riley Gilmore, the former Panther, as that one fouled away again, playing for a Middle Tennessee State team that knocked off Central Arkansas yesterday, 8-0 in the first game of the Tuscaloosa Regional. So Central Arkansas well represented throughout the collegiate level. Softball is just continuing to grow and grow in this state. You're starting to see some high-end talent because of it. The 0-2 swung on and missed. Houston, there is no problem. Benton cruising 4-0. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. People would come from miles around to come to 9th Street just to see what it was like. I'm saying this was the mecca of entertainment in the South. I want to play a off of this oh, yeah. We thought we was on top of the world. You know? Download the PBS video app or watch online. Can you see her greatness when you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Congratulations to our Arkansas PBS student all-star, Kiara Pickens from BB. The senior pitcher has a 4.0 GPA and plans on going to college to play softball and obtain a degree in exercise science and occupational therapy. Congratulations, Kiara. And another one of those great players coming out of BB High School, the BB Badgers. Getting a lot of airtime, getting a lot of talking about as a program. First pitch in play over to first as... Emily Reed is retired. First time Greene County Tech has gotten the leadoff batter out today. Reed, Cole Clagger, Mitchell do up. Or rather, should say Cole Clagger, Mitchell Crosby now for Benton as there's one away here in the bottom of the third inning. Cole Clagger singled but was stranded on second base in the bottom of the first. And takes a drop ball low as it skips out on the turf. Cole Clagger has that slap approach. A lot of times you'll see that from someone at the top of the lineup, not necessarily in the teeth of the lineup in that five hole, but obviously it's working with a 582 average on the season. And considering as that one tapped just foul, with the success that Heidi Cox has had over the last couple of years, I'm not going to argue with no, her. Not at all. With her lineup management, but I do agree with you. It's unusual to see a lineup that's not lefty heavy with a lefty in that five spot. You think of Central Arkansas, uh, the Bears with seven out of nine lefties, so there's a ton of lefties up and down that lineup. But typically the lefty reserve for one, two, nine, somewhere in that area. Cole Clagger puts it down on the ground. Uses her speed. She is safe at first, no doubt about it. But Bobby, to your point, that may be while Cole Clagger is in that spot 
to try and function in the middle of the lineup to turn it over. Well, yeah, you can see a good look at Coach Heidi Cox. There. This is not built like a normal team, though, because you mentioned the lack of power. I'm not going to say the lack of power, the lack of home runs for this team this right. year. And so they're built a little different. So it, it's all about on-base <laughs> percentage. Get somebody on base. Cole Klegger obviously placed one down perfectly. A little miscommunication between the third baseman and the pitcher. And as soon as that happened, they had no chance of throwing her out at first. And words of encouragement from head coach Heidi Cox as she returned over to third. A take from A.C. Mitchell. Of course, Heidi Cox, a fantastic collegiate player in her own right. Tons of records for Arkansas Monticello during her playing days, ones that still stand. Second in program history in average hits, stolen bases as well. That a take and strike as Cole Klager way in ahead of the throw, stolen base for the freshman. If you've got speed, you can always put it to use. And Cole Klager with the little, little swinging bunts to get on base and now easily swipe second. Now she's in scoring position. Something past an infielder is going to get her home. The 1-1. One, one. That one nubbed back up the center. Cole Klager will move to third. A close play at first. But the throw is just in time to retire Mitchell. So two away here in the bottom of the third inning. Hideaway Pizza is a proud supporter of Arkansas PBS Sports, serving Conway in the central Arkansas area at 1170 South Amity Road in Conway. Benton trying to score in each of the first three innings with a runner on third. Mallory Crosby flew out to Burnside in deep left field in her first plate appearance. First pitch swinging, flares it down the left field line, just out of play. Into the Benton fans. I would expect someone to make a grab there, guys. Come on now. Gotta make a play. Right? If you're gonna come to the park, you better <laughs> catch something. We saw some good plays behind home plate last we night. We did. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it was a Gravit fan who made a play. Mm hmm I remember the sweet sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah. 0-1 to Crosby. And taken low in the turf. Important for the Green County Tech catcher to be a wall back there. The runner on third with good speed. The thing that get, gets past her be another run. 1-1. One, one. Pulled over towards the right side. But the throw in time is back-to-back -back batters. Ground out to the second baseman. Benton kept off the scoreboard for the first time today. But the Panthers still in control. Four to nothing as we head to the top of the fourth inning. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first, by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind, Centennial Bank, member FDIC. Not a bad investment. <laughs> that's like a 6,900% increase. Now that's money well spent. Excellent. Not a bad investment. Yeah. Your investment in this PBS station brings Antiques Roadshow into your home each week. That's a good investment. Call, text, or go online to give now. Oh my gosh. Thank you. bob has got a brand new bag, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Let me take you for a ride on the baseline. Let's go! Griffin Leggett Funeral Home is a proud supporter of Arkansas PBS Sports. Serving the Conway area located at 1751 Dave Ward Drive in Conway. Griffin Leggett, proudly serving our communities in central Arkansas since 1936. Second time through the order for Greene County Tech going up against Alyssa Houston. Only one hit for the Golden Eagles. That was on a two-out single by Bree Sage in the top of the third inning. It will be Reynolds, Spear, and Burnside due up for Greene County Tech. Emma Thomason waiting should anybody reach. Reynolds grounded out to Houston in her first at bat. Popped out of play. 
Good crowd on a beautiful day for softball here in Central Arkansas, the sixth and final softball state championship game in what has been a full weekend here at the University of Central Arkansas. Softball, baseball, soccer's going on over at Estes Stadium. 20 championships being handed out this weekend, and we're, we're almost home. <laughs> it's hard to believe these three games, of, three days have gone this quickly, and hard to believe that the athletic year has gone this quickly, because uh, at the end of today, we've got no sports until August. It absolutely flies. The 2-1 popped directly back behind home plate, 2-2. Two and two. Softball leading the way today. Two baseball games coming up a little bit later, starting with the 3A game coming up after this. It will be Rivercrest and Harding Academy. Join Kyle Deckelbaum and Kevin Bohannon for the baseball doubleheader to round out the coverage here on Arkansas PBS Sports. The 2-2. Taken just outside and high. That's a tough pitch to take there. Nice job to lay off. That one's close. You know, Reynolds gets the benefit of the doubt now. One of the rare full counts that worked against Houston. That's the first full count of the day for Houston. And put in play over to the left side. That's going to be through. Just past the diving grab of Hobson over at third base. And so two hits in the last three batters for Green County Tech. And if you're the Golden Eagles, that's something that you're starting to think, okay, maybe we can actually get to Houston. Yeah, that's... That's exactly right, Dorian, because now you've got a little confidence. Now the uh, that, that aura of like, oh, she can't be touched, talking about Alyssa Houston, isn't there anymore. You mentioned two of the last three have reached to be the, the base hit, and now you've got a little confidence to get something going now. He's got the leadoff hitter on here in the fourth. First time Green County Tech has had a leadoff hitter reach. A first pitch strike at the knees to Marley Spear. Spear popped up to the first baseman, Reed, to end things in the first. 418 average for Spear this year. Chased one out of the zone there, though. And quickly behind in the count, 0-2, as Spear went after the rise ball out of the hand of Houston. 11 home runs on the season for Spear, 12 doubles. And as we mentioned, a ton of pop in this Green County Tech lineup. 120 extra base hits, 73 doubles on the year. But goes down via the rise ball as that is the eighth strikeout of the game so far for Alyssa Houston. Yeah, Houston saw that she would climb the ladder just a little bit on the previous pitch, and there she goes even higher. And Spear just could not lay off the one up around the shoulders, and she sat down swinging. One on, one out for Weslin Burnside, who struck out to lead off the second inning. First pitch swinging, flared out to shallow right field, but the play is made over at second, over to first, in time as Benton doubles off Reynolds over at first base, so that'll do it for Green County Tech in the top of the fourth inning. Panthers trying to get back on the board. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. What exactly did they get wrong? That Arkansas values our teachers. The House and Senate thought was very disingenuous. Arkansas Week is celebrating 40 years of public affairs programming. From news analysis to election and legislative coverage, see why Arkansas Week has become a staple for thousands of viewers every week. Tune in Fridays and Sundays and stay up to date the rest of the week by signing up for our newsletter at myarpbs.org slash sign up. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. Benton's defense hasn't been tested a whole lot this year, but when they have, they've been up to the challenge. Yeah, great play, ranging back by the second baseman to make the catch, and the relay throw the first of the double play, Addison Davis, but if you're Green County Tech, you cannot run yourself out of scoring opportunities. You get the leadoff batter on with a single, 
and you quickly erase it by a mis uh, mistake on the base pass. That's just something you cannot have when you're already in a 4-0 hole. Running right into the hands of the Benton Panthers, who have a 4-0 lead in the bottom of the fourth inning. This game rolling right along first pitch at 1 o'clock. We are an hour in, just over the halfway mark here in the 5A state championship game. That one stays low, 2-0. It'll be Mendez Hobson in the top of the order in Davis due up for Benton. Mendez singled and scored in the second. And takes ball three high. Command hasn't been much of an issue up to this point for Carly Burrow, the pitcher for Green County Tech. The problem has been uh, the Benton contact, but now she's uh, found herself in the 3-0 hole. Benton been very aggressive at the plate so far in this game. Two of her boy, boy, Burrow as that is a four-pitch walk to lead off the inning. Burrow has only thrown 44 pitches coming into this inning, so it, it's been efficient. That bounces in the turf, and another leadoff runner on for Benton. AZ Morrow back into courtesy run for the catcher, Violet Mendez. Murrow was actually the runner that scored on the double by Lydia Bethards back in the second inning. As Hobson shows bunt, pulls back. She was able to sacrifice back in the second. And again, with the leadoff runner on for Benton, they've got a chance to, to add on to their lead. And that's been, that's been the trend today. Green County Tech not able to get that leadoff batter out in the inning, allowing Benton to get a rally going. Bunt pushed back to the pitcher. Burrow's only play is to first. And again, Hobson is retired via the sacrifice, but Second verse, same as the first. This is exactly how the second uh, inning played out. Our Care is a proud sponsor of Arkansas PBS Sports. The Our Care Network of Medical Clinics and Pharmacies helps to keep you in the game playing your best, Our Care, so you can live your story. Now, the story of the game so far has been the success at the plate for the Benton Panthers as Addison Davis steps in for the third time today through just four innings. First pitch swinging, pulls it over to the right side, has to go back to first as the pinch runner, runner Morrow able to advance to third. But Davis retired for the second time today on the three unassisted. Spear thought she was going to flip it back to her second baseman and wasn't over to cover in time, so she has to handle it herself. And luckily that didn't turn into a disaster. It had the markings of some miscommunication there as there was a little bit of confusion about who was going where. And Davis runs well, so you don't have that much time to make that decision. And once again, Green County Tech will make the decision to issue the intentional walk to Alyssa Houston. Bobby, what do you think about the decision? Uh, I like the decision to walk her. I don't necessarily like the rule that you don't have to throw the four pitches to intentionally walk her. Mm. I know it speeds up the game a little bit. You're going to put her on first base anyway, but with a runner on third, make the pitcher throw those four pitches, make them execute it, so because potentially that runner from third could score on any errant throw. Intentional walks have been the theme of the day. We saw that a lot back in the 3A state championship game to Lexi Gooden. And first pitch strike on the inside corner taken by Lydia Bethards. But to, uh, I don't think it's ever a bad idea to intentionally watch so someone who's hitting 691. Well, Houston is hitting 691, but Bethard's two for two with an RBI today. <laughs> a single, a double, scored a run back in the first inning. Yeah. That's what Bethard's job is to do. Right. I, I guarantee that's happened probably quite a bit this year. Oh. That one cranked out to left field. It's going to get down right in front of the fence. Burnside plays it off of the fence. Here comes the runner to the plate. The throw is not in time. And Benton gets two more on the RBI base hit. A stand-up double by Bethards. So a great piece of hitting by Bethards, and that validates what you're saying, is you, you intentionally walk a hitter to get to someone who's hitting 474, and for the third time, she's already made them pay today. Lydia Bethards having herself a day here in the 5A title game. 
And Burnside got that ball in quickly as well. It's a good outfield play out there by Burnside, just not able to catch the speedy Raspberry, who is the courtesy runner for Alyssa Houston. And now Benton up 6-0, bottom four, two away in the inning with a runner on second base. That brings to the plate Emily Reed. Reed 0 for 2, popped up to the shortstop, grounded out to the third baseman. Takes the first pitch ball off the outside corner. The top three of the lineup have just done so much damage for Benton today, as much as they have all season long. Lifted out to right center field, drifting back but playable as Carter is under it for out number three. Benton, though, gets two more. Panthers up six. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. This month on Arkansas PBS. The more time I spend in nature, I realize how fragile everything is. Give nature a chance and it'll come right back. That's what we're asking for, is to give the right world a chance. The mystery ship thought Titanic would, would not sink. How could any ship leave a ship, especially of Titanic size, in distress? Only on Arkansas PBS. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. We're more than halfway home in the 5A state championship game. Benton on top six to nothing. And it was the Panthers that struck first in the bottom of the first inning following a leadoff single from Addison Davis. Alyssa Houston with the double and then Lydia Bethards keeping the inning going as Cameron Kolklager, the infield single in the second inning. More from the Panthers as they would get another one in the home half of the second inning. Byla Mendez led things off and Lydia Bethards brought her in with a RBI double. A little bit of confusion. We had a home plate umpire get in the way, kept Benton from getting an extra run in that inning. Green County Tech able to get out of it. But once again in the fourth, Benton going back to work. And Lydia Bethards has really been the go-to batter in this Benton lineup. Green County Tech trying to work around Alyssa Houston but Benton coming up big behind her. And the Panthers with a 6-0 lead as we get to the top of the fifth inning. Yeah, Bethard's four RBIs already here today. And we're just now in the fifth. A 6-0 lead feels like more than enough for Alyssa Houston. So the Golden Eagles have work to do down to the final nine outs in their season. Thomas and Gonzalez Burrow do up. And that one swung on and missed. And it feels like, Bobby, maybe Green County Tech, there's still a long way to go, but maybe miss one of their best opportunities in the last inning, getting doubled off yeah, to end the, the inning. Ran themselves out of an opportunity. It's a swing and a miss there. It's, when you get the leadoff runner on, you've got to find a way to manufacture them over and try to get them in, especially when your scoring opportunities are going to be limited in the, in the first place against a quality pitcher. You can't make the mistakes on the base pass like GCT did on that last inning. 51 pitches through four complete innings as that one flared down the right field line and it's going to get out of play. If you're the Golden Eagles, how do you finally try and break through against Houston? Well, I mean, I don't think you can change your approach. It's obviously worked up to this point in the season for the Lady Eagles. I mean, you're 24 and 5, obviously a really good team. What you've done all season long has worked. Swung on and missed another strikeout for Houston as she continues to rack up the Ks. That's now number nine. Yeah, and it's not that you know you're you're making up taking a lot of bad swings. You're just you're facing an elite pitcher. But that doesn't mean that she's unbeatable or unhittable. You've got a pair of hits of already today. You've got to find a way to make contact as Thompson swings underneath that one and misses. Houston headed to play for the Stanford Cardinal in the fall, headed to the West Coast. 
And bunt shown and bunted through for strike number one. Sofia Gonzalez struck out to end the inning in the top of the second. And as much as we'd like to see one, there's no such thing as the six front homer, so you just have to start <laughs> to chip away, kind of pull up that pickaxe and start to chip away, chip away, and, and hope Benton will eventually crack and allow you to have a big inning. Unless you're talking about a globe trotter <laughs> style of softball, which I've yet to see, but that would actually be pretty interesting. The old school MTV was the, the rock and jock. Yes. The events, they had like the 10 point shot from half court. <laughs> World. We are. The 1 1. Swung on and missed. Rise ball up out of the zone. Now Houston's future team will be back in action today, taking on Florida in their regional. That game on ESPN coming up a little bit later. There's a lot of good softball. Razorbacks coming up a little bit later. UCA is trying to stay alive. The 1 2. Now take it high. You have to love the growth of the sport, though. You know, the sport continues to grow in popularity. I said on Twitter earlier this week, you know, so many people have been complaining about the seeding, about Alabama getting the number five national seed. When we went to the NCAA tournament, I think it was just us, our parents, and our coaches that yeah. knew what it was. Our count runs full now at three and two. We're really starting to see the growth of a, a lot of sports that maybe weren't on the forefront of everybody's attention uh, five, maybe ten years ago. Obviously, the growth of volleyball mm -hmm. has really taken off. Uh, across our state the last couple years. Strike three called as Gonzalez can't get the bat off the shoulder. So in, in softball, we're doing nothing but get better and better. And now the facilities across the state are getting better and better, not just at the high school, but the college level. Obviously, community fields are starting to pop up, and that allows more and more kids a chance to go out and play year-round and, and hone their craft. And that's why we're starting to see more uh, top-level athletes, Division One athletes being produced in the state of Arkansas. The first pitch caught a strike on the outside corner to Carly Burrow. Like Arkansas has always been a really, really good basketball state, in my opinion, both I would agree. male and female, really good athletes in, in the natural state. And football is going to have what it is, but the, the other sports, baseball, softball, volleyball, a lot of really good talent uh, within our border. And now we're starting, thanks to the Arkansas PBS, we're starting to see those mm -hmm. other sports get their recognition. The volleyball championships on TV in the fall, obviously baseball, softball here in the spring. To further that conversation, especially considering how late Arkansas switched to fast pitch softball. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until the late 90s as Burrow takes another called strike. So to have that kind of meteoric rise in the sport after turning over to fast pitch so late, it really speaks to the talent level within the state of Arkansas. Just the 24th year that fast pitch right. has been uh, a triple A sanctioned sport. One, two, popped into the air. It's going to say on the infield playable. Who wants it? Hobson is under it as Houston retires the side in order. Still 6-0 Benton. We go to the home half of the fifth inning. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. A special thank you to the University of Central Arkansas for their help setting up and hosting the event and broadcast. Central Arkansas Athletics home to 19 NCAA Division I sports and over 450 student athletes who succeed on both the fields and courts as well as in the classroom. Visit UCASports.com to learn more. Bottom five in the 5A state championship game. Benton on top six to nothing over Green County Tech. Five, six, seven due up for the Panthers. Cole Clagger, Mitchell Crosby. Cole Clagger two for two, a pair of singles. Shows bunt and pulls back on a ball out of the zone. It's 
keeping the leadoff batter off the path has been the, the problem for Greene County Tech today. Obviously, when you're facing some of the talent of Cole Clacker, who's been on base both times she's been to the plate, it's not an easy start. Bunt pulled down the first baseline, but foul. This is the second straight 5A state championship game that Carly Burrow has started. She went the distance last year for Greene County Tech through six innings, gave up 10 hits in that game that was split over two days. Part of her 19 and four season. A 1.36 ERA a year ago en route to the 5A Pitcher of the Year honors. That ball bunted right back to Burrow, not over in time. Cole Clagger three for three. But it's worth mentioning that Burrow very nearly not able to play softball anymore. As a sophomore, she spiral fractured her ankle playing basketball, had to miss the entire season back in 2021, wasn't able to play travel ball that year either, and so has had to really work back through some adversity. Yeah, just to be able to battle back, and of course the year before that was the COVID year. Right. You know, everybody missed their entire season, so for her to be able to, to come back and have the two type of seasons that she's been able to have just shows the guts and, and, and the work that she's put in to this Green County Tech program. First pitch swinging ripped down the third base line. And prior to that injury, Burrow said she'd actually lost some of her love of the sport. It, it sometimes it starts to feel like a job. It starts to feel like work. But that injury, not being able to play as a sophomore, really restored her love and her work ethic for the sport. And you can see how much she's grown since then. Uh, that's, that's a really good way to put it because a lot of people don't think about it. When you get hurt and you take away the joy of actually playing in the game and all it is is just practice, that's when it does become a job. That's when you see a lot of athletes at the high school, college, or even the pro level, that's when they kind of lose that desire. Cole Clagger going to be called out for leaving first early as she was trying to steal second. And so Benton now with one away in the inning. Special thanks to Kyle Sutherland, our friend, for giving us that information. We have to give credit where credit's due to our sources. Bobby and I don't know everything, surprisingly enough. No doubt. Kyle does great work for Scorebook Live. A fouled away again. A battle inside the box here for AC Mitchell. This is Cole Clagger being called out for leaving early. You can see the call made right away. The first base umpire, Eric Wallace, right over it. Hard to tell exactly how early she was without the view of the pitcher, but remember in softball, you cannot leave the base until the pitch is delivered out of the hand from the hip. Runner's always trying to force that a little bit. That one right back up the middle. Mitchell right on that one and ropes it right back to where it came from. A big yellow orb coming straight at you in the camera. Is Mitchell able to barrel that up for the one-out single? Crosby stepping in now 0 for 2 on the day. We will get a pinch runner for Benton. That is going to be number three. Now Benton getting everybody in in the state championship today. Had a couple of courtesy runners. And everyone getting their moment. That is Bailey Pierce, who is playing left field. So Pinch running for the, swapping out for the DP. First pitch swinging, it's going to be nubbed up the middle, just out of the reach of the second baseman. Got past Stokes, and now Benton with two on here in the bottom of the fifth. And that's how big that uh, base running miscue by Kohlklager is now. Instead of, that probably would have scored a run, now it's just first and second. Limits the damage just a little bit, but this inning could have been a lot more uh, advantageous for the Lady Panthers had it not been for that miscue. Just out of the reach of Stokes. Remember, the turf at Ferris Field is an all-turf infield as well as a turf outfield. Plays a little bit different than dirt, a little bit faster. So sometimes you'll see infielders think they're in position, but they're not there quite yet. It's just about an inch or two out of their reach. A first pitch strike delivered to Violet Mendez. Bobby, I think back to a conversation that I had with Liberty head coach and two-time gold medalist Dot Richardson about when her team played here at Ferris Field, and that was a big issue for them as well. That one lifted out into center field. Ava Carter, the Arkansas commit underneath it. There to record out number two. 
used to be the biggest difference was going to be base running. How, how early do you have to get into your slide? But the, the surface is certainly going to play differently. Obviously, the conditions and the weather are going to play more into it, the humidity, any potential moisture. And so it's a lot different than you would expect uh, for a lot of different reasons other than just running the base pass or just ground balls. They have resurfaced here at Ferris Field recently. You can see around the pitching circle, that is actually a fine silica as opposed to the turf, the rubber pellets that you used to see on uh, football fields and indoor facilities and whatnot like that. It's a good look from our camera crew. I'm telling you though, I think I'm still finding those rubber pellets yeah. in my shoes almost a decade later. You, you step foot on a football field, <laughs> you're gonna have about those in, the, in your socks for a week. It's like glitter, but not yes. as fun. Yes, I never have to ask you where you've been if you've got that on you. <laughs> 2-0 to Dakota Hobson in the nine spot. Hobson with a pair of sacrifices today, so technically 0 for 0. Get another look at the playing surface here at Ferris Field. All turf. That's a strike on the inside corner. The most, the, the most entertaining thing when the turf fields started to become a thing were with the umpires when they'd walk around and the pitcher, the catcher would go out to talk to the pitcher. Of course, they walk around to dust off the plate and they realize <laughs> it's not actual <laughs> plate, it's just more turf. <laughs> Wait, it's real? No, that's a plate. Well, here it is now, okay. but when it first came out, the plate would just be the white turf. I was going to say, I've walked out on that yeah. field. I know that's a plate. Yeah, uh, yeah there it is. There's a, a little bit of black pellets. You got a little bit of black pellet there around home plate because they never go away. So two on, two out here in the bottom of the fifth for Benton trying to add to their 6 nothing lead. Foul back and away. Ferris Field actually in the conversation to potentially host an NCAA regional this year. Of course, the rule from the NCAA, you cannot have all turf fields as a hosting site, although as the popularity of turf fields continues to grow, you would expect that rule to change maybe in the near future. That one taken high as the count runs full. I mean, the beauty of the turf field, of course, you don't have to work it. Yeah. yeah. You know, if it rains, you don't have to worry about you know, staying off the field for five, six hours or coming back the next day. Are there any disadvantages, you think, of having an all, all synthetic surface? I'm a traditionalist. That one taken low for ball four as Hobson draws the walk. I mean, I, I'm a traditionalist. I prefer the dirt, but I understand the advantages of having a turf field as it pertains to being able to play, uh, not having the rain delay, because we would have had a rain delay yesterday considering yeah. how hard it rained. And I know that uh, Bears head coach Jenny Parsons, she said one of the advantages of coming over from Nichols is she knew on a turf field she never had to work it again. Yeah. So so I get it. I just, I miss the dirt. You know, you and I are, are older. I don't yeah. say we're old, but I, I like growing up with the dirt. So what you're telling me is you've already bought stock and laundry detergent and you're losing money. <laughs> yes, exactly. So there's tide shares. I'm just throwing money down the drain. Now first pitch high to leadoff batter Addison Davis. Fourth time through the lineup for Benton. Davis is one for three, singled and scored in the first, struck out in the second, and grounded out to the first baseman spear back in the fourth inning. And bases full of Panthers. Hobson at first, Crosby second, Pierce at third. And nowhere for Davis to go, and she's ahead in the count 2-0. Yeah, you've got to come right at Davis here if you're Green County Tech because you know who's waiting on deck. You've intentionally walked her the last two times, but if the bases are loaded, you're not going to have that opportunity and Burrow needs to get back into the zone. You're not going to go Barry Bonds? You might. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see it, but with the score like it is, uh, it's, but if you let you let uh, Davis reach here, so that score is going to be at least seven, so the potential game-ending run would be on base. Green County Tech trying to stay in this game after holding Benton off the base, or off the scoreboard, rather. For the third inning, Benton struck for two more in the bottom of the fourth. They scored in the first, second, and fourth innings. Green County Tech has managed two hits and only two base runners. And that one set out to left center field. That's a good swing, but ranging over is Carter. She makes the grab. And so Benton loads the bases, but cannot push a run across. It stays a six-run game as we go to the top of the sixth. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Stream the best of PBS on any device with the PBS Video app. All your favorite drama, history, science, news, and documentaries all in one place. 
Watch your PBS station live or catch up on the shows you missed. Support your PBS station and you can get Passport, giving you full seasons, early releases, special collections, and more. Download the PBS video app or watch online. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau insurance agent. Farm Bureau insurance. Real service. Real people. Hotel accommodations and sponsorship for the 2023 Arkansas High School State Baseball and Softball Championship broadcast provided by Hilton Garden Inn at 805 Amity Road in Conway and the home to suites at 820 Bill Dean Driveway in Conway. Welcome back to Ferris Field alongside Bobby Swafford. I'm Dorian Kraft. Happy to have you with us here on this final day of high school sports in the state of Arkansas, our sixth and final softball state championship game as Alyssa Houston Starts off Avery Stokes with a strike on the outside corner. Stokes, Sage, Ava Carter due up for the Golden Eagles in the bottom of the sixth inning. And quickly, uh, Houston ahead in the count, 0-2. Oh Houston just hasn't slowed down, hasn't slowed her pace at all. She gets her signal from her battery mate and just goes to work. And one, two, three, Stokes retired on three straight pitches. And the strikeout total continues to rise for the Stanford commit. Now Bobby, something we haven't really talked about as it pertains to Alyssa Houston is that she was working in tandem last year. Houston was the beneficiary of Scott also being on the roster. Those two really kind of handled pitching duties. Elena Scott started as there's a Line shot out to center field. Carter, or rather, Cole Clagger is there. And four pitches and two outs. And that will bring to the plate the Arkansas commit, Ava Carter. Yeah, the numbers for Carter this year just through the roof. But this that's kind of been the, the issue for Green County Tech today. She hasn't been able to get on the base path to take advantage of her skill set, which is her speed. 22 walks this year. She's got 34 RBIs, but 51 runs. And again, first pitch swing. And frustrated at that as that is popped up on the infield. So Houston needs just five pitches to retire Green County Tech in order in the top of the sixth inning. Still 6 nothing Benton. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. This month in Passport on the PBS video app. Many of the stories told about kings and queens have been spun. Who knows where facts and fibs may take us next. This would have been your grandfather's experience, and it's really quite dramatic. Hell in frozen water. The war really mattered to Elizabeth. She is growing in confidence. These and other shows from Arkansas PBS are available with Passport on the PBS video app. Let me take you for a ride on the baseline. Let's go! A special thank you to Conway Corp for their help setting up the event and broadcast. Conway Corp was formed in 1929 to support education in Conway, and more than 90 years later, serving the community and its educational needs remain a core value. Learn more about the nationally recognized utilities provided for the community at conwaycorp.com. 2-3-4 due up for the Benton Panthers in the bottom of the sixth inning. And Alyssa Houston, after being intentionally walked twice, will get a chance to hit for herself. 
She had one pitch today. Make it Make two. <laughs> that one to the exact same part of the field, but Houston retired on a ground out to third base. That's one of those lovely spring sports statistical anomalies. She has uh, had four plate appearances and seen two pitches. Uh, Houston is an aggressive hitter. Uh, quickly retired, one away in the inning, as Benton inching closer to a third consecutive state championship. But that brings up to the plate Lydia Bethard, who has had arguably the best day in this Panthers lineup. Yeah, four RBIs already today for Bethard. She's really benefited from Green County Tech intentionally walking in Alyssa Houston those two times. And Bethard has three hits on the day, a pair of doubles, scored a run back in the first inning. Batting with the bases empty here in the sixth. One one count to the Panthers number three hitter, who was a 474 hitter coming into this game. So Benton cruising right along here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. The top half of the six, we told you it was just five pitches, but from first pitch to the final out recorded, just a minute and 40 seconds in the top of the sixth inning. That one hammered Bethards again, but right in there is Burnside shading over to the left field line. And you think Burnside remembered the previous three at bats? Yeah, it's clear that Bethards was was sitting on that and able to turn on it like she's done most of this day, but great defensive alignment by Burnside. Just it takes a few steps to her right to record the second outs of the inning. Burnside may be getting a little pregame pep talk advice from older sister Braxton, who had uh, just a little bit of success of her own. Braxton Burnside, of course, played high school ball for Paragould before going to play at Missouri and then eventually transferring back to be the starting shortstop for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of that core group that really helped to elevate Courtney Deifel's program into the national stratosphere. It's really turned Arkansas into a top 15 national seed. Uh, big reason why some of the Arkansas State Championships can't be in Northwest Arkansas That's anymore. right. Used to be a Vogel Park. Used Not to be at anymore. the University of Arkansas, but now with the regionals the same weekend as the yeah. state finals, you can't have both. And obviously, they're going to choose to host the regional. <laughs> the ball bounces off the turf. Change up to Emily Reed as the count two and one to the senior first baseman. Reed 0 for 3 on the afternoon. Pop up, ground out, fly out. Skied out to center field. This ball is deep. It's going back. Carter can't get it. It gets stuck on top of the netting. And Reed going all the way around. And the ball off the fence got caught on the padding in dead center field. I've never seen that before. Kind of, kind of a unique play. You know, Carter tracks and just couldn't elevate enough as that one ticks off the top of her glove, then stays on top of the padding. Sometimes you'll see at the big league level, it gets wedged underneath the fence. That's that's unique. Not sure I've ever seen it actually stay on top of a fence, but most times you don't have padding that sticks out farther than the actual fence surface. Well, the fans in center field were at least helpful trying yeah. to tell her where it was. That's a two out triple off of the bat of Emily Reed brings to bat. Cam Colclagger, who is three for three. Kind of reminds me of uh, when basketball, when you just have those ones that sit on the back yeah. of the rim. Colclagger puts it in play right in front of the play. That's going to be an infield single. No chance to get Colclagger and Reed in on the throw down to first. So Benton once again utilizing that aggressive base running to their advantage. Nice job by Cole Clagger just to put it in play. She knows her speed's going to give him a chance to beat out the throw. But if you're Green County Tech, you have to realize who's at, at bat there and understand, okay, the ball's right in front of the plate. I don't need to make that throw because more times than not, I'm not going to throw her out because that's a great look. And as soon as the ball leaves her hand, the run comes home to score and add another one for the Benton Lady Panthers. Seven runs in now for Benton in the bottom of the sixth inning. First pitch swinging, grounder over to short. Throw over to first in time to retire A.C. Mitchell. But the Panthers plate one more as we go to the top of the seventh inning. Final three outs for Greene County. They'll try to extend this game 
You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. During the past year, we've been traversing the natural state with our cinematic drone from lakes and rivers, waterfalls, scenic byways, mountains, swamps, overlooks, and towering rock formations. This unique documentation of all four seasons from all four corners of the state with an aerial cinematic perspective will give you, the viewer, an Arkansas adventure like never before, exploring Arkansas from above. Download the PBS video app or watch online. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. We never go to stop. A special thank you to the Conway Chamber of Commerce for helping us organize and set up the event and broadcast. The Conway Chamber of Commerce serving the Conway area business community since 1891. For more information, visit conwaychamber.org. That first pitch strike delivered to Zoe Reynolds here in the top of the seventh inning. Benton leading 7-0, just three outs away from capturing their third consecutive 5A state championship. Sitting in their way, Reynolds Spear Burnside. That miss is low and outside. Emma Thomason is waiting should anybody for Greene County Tech reach. It's been tough sledding for the Golden Eagles against the Stanford commit. Houston has been electric inside the circle. That one flared out to left field. It's going to get down for a leadoff single, the third hit of the game for Greene County Tech. And the Golden Eagles not going quietly here in the top of the seventh. So Zoe Reynolds had herself a nice day, a pair of singles, both to that left side. <laughs> Reynolds singled through the five, six hole in the last, her last at bat. As you see the hitting summary, three for 20 for the Golden Eagles, 13 of 26 for the Benton Panthers. Seven runs coming off of those 13 hits as Marley Spear stepping in 0 for 2. A pop to first and a strikeout in the fourth. That one running in on the hands. Count even at 1 and 1. Bobby, if you're Green County Tech here, what's the mentality? You just got to chip away. You got the leadoff player on. And so now you just go station to station. You can't make any extra outs on the base pass. Just try, just try to make her Alyssa Houston throw you strikes, and it is just really move 60 feet at a time because uh, you, you need almost two grand slams, and so you, you kind of pick away, pick away, and, and hope maybe Benton you know, makes a mistake or two to, to help you out. Elevated and slapped but fouled down the left field line. We've seen Green County Tech at points make some really solid contact. It just... The majority of that contact has either been fouled down either one of the lines. It's, it's so hard to time up when you, mm -hmm. when you don't see this kind of velocity that Houston's throwing, and so you try to jump out early, or that time a little bit behind. Another strikeout for Alyssa Houston. There's one away here in the inning. I mean, you, you can go against a pitching machine all, the, all you want. It's not the same. But, but until you <laughs> step onto the field against someone actually throwing at you, uh, it's really hard to, to time that up, and so you, you, you tell yourself, okay, I've got to start my swing just a tick earlier because that one's fouled back, and then all of a sudden that's how you get, get those that are being pulled foul, just like the one we saw. Twelfth strikeout of the game for Alyssa Houston. She has allowed three hits, issued no walks, no hit batters. And so the three hits, the only base runners of the game for Green County Tech. None have advanced past first base. Right. You had a single, a two-out single by Bree Sage in the third. A single to lead things off in the fourth, but Reynolds was doubled off on the pop-up by Burnside. Now another single, but 0-2 oh the count now to Burnside standing in the box. On the right side over to second base. Lead runners out at second. 
over to first, not in time. Burnside able to beat it out. But there are now two away here in the top of the seventh. Don't see a double play turn very often, but a hard hit ball to the right side. Really well executed by that Benton defense. The relay throw just not in time as Burnside was able to beat out the throw. Nice turn by Bethers, but those Burnsides, they run well. A lot of softball talent in that family. Two out, one on. First pitch swinging, Thomason. And that will do it. Three times the Benton Panthers have been the 5A state champions. The Lady Panthers make a statement today against Green County Tech. Just the 11th school in state history to complete a three-peat in fast pitch softball. And Benton well, was just dominant in the state tournament and dominant again here today. And Alyssa Houston, a big reason for that. 12 strikeouts in this contest. And the Benton Lady Panthers are again your state champs. Uh, Benton going to get some very familiar hardware. We're going to step away from just a minute, but Bobby Swafford and I will be back with the trophy presentation and a recap of the action when we return right here on Arkansas PBS Sports. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Want to see even more Arkansas stories? Subscribe to Arkansas PBS on YouTube for original productions, extras from your favorite local programs, behind the scenes videos, and our exclusive coverage of high school sports. All available on demand and all Arkansas made. Don't miss out on more great Arkansas stories. Subscribe now. We all know the best ways to take care of our teeth, like brushing twice a day and flossing once a day. But there's another small thing you can do that protects your teeth in a big way. If you or your child is involved in contact sports, wearing a mouth guard is important to protect teeth. Mouth guards cover teeth and gums to prevent and reduce injury to teeth lips and gums. There are several varieties of mouth guards, so you can find one that is affordable and easy to use. A mouth guard should fit properly, be durable and easy to clean, and not restrict speech or breathing. Talk with your dentist about which mouth guard is best for you or your child's needs. At Delta Dental of Arkansas, we're proud to be the champions of your smile. For more helpful oral health tips and information, visit www.deltadentalar.com. The Benton Panthers are your 5A state champions for the third year in a row after defeating Green County Tech 7-0 in today's state championship game. And Bobby, this one felt like it could be close, but Benton really putting their mark early on this game. You know, softball's got to go the full distance, and you see crazy things happen. That first inning really seemed to set the tempo. Alyssa Houston comes out and just goes one, two, three quickly. I believe it was about 10 pitches to set down Green County Tech, and then the Benton offense came up and has really hammered the pitching of Green County Tech, put pressure on them early. A couple mental mistakes, not necessarily errors as far as not going to the correct base to get, a, get an easy out, allowed Benton to push across a couple runs, and that first inning really set the tempo for this contest and led way to Benton holding that trophy for the third straight year. Doesn't matter how many times you've done it, it always feels special as Benton now, the state champion for the third straight year. Benton improves to 29 and four on the season. Green County Tech, a second straight runner up to the Benton Panthers. It's turning into a little bit of a rivalry, which we certainly hope will continue for years to come as you take a look at the Golden Eagles. But Benton, there's the trophy. Here comes the banner as well. And smile big, ladies. That's a special moment. It really is. I mean, this team, I mean, it's, it's a dynasty. You can go ahead and call it that. Again, just the 11th time in the 24-year history of fast pitch softball in Arkansas that a team has won three in a row. Uh, really impressive to see them complete it and a really impressive program that Heidi Cox and company have built there in Saline County. Three state championships in a row, only four losses dating back to the 2020 season just before COVID hit. So Benton establishing themselves as the premier 5A program in the state, one of the premier programs overall in the state. And this is how this game unfolded. Bobby mentioned that Alyssa Houston came up and retired the first three in order in the top of the first inning. But it was the bottom of the first where things really got started for Benton. They had three hits in a row. 
ended up plating three runs. Davis scored. Alyssa Houston had a double, ended up scoring. And then the single by Cameron Kohlklager. The throw came to home. The run ended up scoring. And then this, the tag and score on a pop-up that was 15 feet away from the plate really set the tone for Benton. And they went back to work in the bottom of the second inning. Violet Mendez scored on the double by Lydia Bethards. Green County Tech making a great play to cut down a run at the plate, but Benton still doing damage at the dish. In the fourth inning, it was Bethards again, another RBI double. Bethards, the beneficiary of Green County Tech, trying to work around Alyssa Houston. And then Cam Kohlklager, what a day. Four for four, four singles. And Benton getting production from up and down the lineup. 13 hits, seven runs en route to their third consecutive state championship. Yeah, the pressure was put on early and often, and Benton just continued to lean on them, lean on them. The, the leadoff batter was on base so many times for this Lady Panther squad. Uh, Green County Tech just really never could stunt the momentum, and anytime they seemed to get something going, they ran themselves out of a potential inning. Uh, granted, at the, end, at the end of the day, that one run wouldn't have mattered, but you just never know what happens if you put a little pressure on a team who's not used to handling that. Hugs all around as Benton celebrates their third consecutive state championship. Well, that is going to do it for our softball state championships. That was the sixth and final game, but there is still plenty of action still ahead here in Conway and here on Arkansas PBS Sports. Coming up next, the 3A baseball state championship between Rivercrest and Harding Academy. Stay tuned for that with Kyle Deckelbaum and Kevin Bohannon. So for our entire crew here at Arkansas PBS Sports and Bobby Swafford, I'm Dorian Kraft saying so long and thank you for joining us once again here on the Weekend of Champions. Don't go anywhere. There is still tons of fantastic high school action still ahead here in Conway. We'll see you later.